Welcome to Chuck Builds. Today we're going to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi and talk about all you need to know for you to do it yourself. There are two installation methods for installing a image onto your SSD and it primarily boils down to how can you connect to your SSD from your computer. I'm using an Argon 1 for this video and I cannot directly connect my SSD to my PC to write an image onto it. So we're going to do a few extra steps to write the image from the Raspberry Pi. However, if you purchase a device such as the SSD enclosure on the screen, you can connect this directly to your computer and flash the Home Assistant OS image directly onto the SSD. Now I realize this might be a lot of y'all's first time doing something like this, so I want to give you a PowerPoint representation of what's going to happen. We're going to take the Raspberry Pi imaging software to install Raspberry Pi operating system onto a micro SD card. We will then take that micro SD card and put it into the Raspberry Pi 4 that will then boot into Raspberry Pi operating system. Once we're inside of the Raspberry Pi operating system, we will then use the Raspberry Pi imaging software again to flash or install the Home Assistant operating system onto the Western Digital SSD that's inside of the Raspberry Pi at this time. For option two, it's a little bit simpler. We would just take the direct SSD connection and connect it to the PC and use the Raspberry Pi imager to install the operating system directly onto the SSD and then connect that to the Raspberry Pi 4. Now that we've gone over an overview of what's going to happen, I'd like to talk about what you need. I'm going to be doing this specifically for the video I've recorded already, and that is a Raspberry Pi 4 using USB-C power. Make sure you get the Raspberry Pi branded one or a good quality one. The Raspberry Pis can be picky. I am using a SATA SSD because my SSD enclosure, the Argon 1, requires that. Make sure that your SSD matches your enclosure as you purchase it. I also am going to need a micro SD card and an SD card reader to install the Home Assistant operating system onto the Argon 1 SSD. I keep referring to the Argon 1, but I haven't explained what it is yet. It is an aluminum case with a fan and a SATA SSD expansion board for the Raspberry Pi 4. I already had one, so that's what I'll be using. It's been pretty slick. It's a nice little case to keep it protected and cool. I would recommend it for its price. It seems like it's well-priced, but the downside is that it does not accept all SSDs, only SATA SSDs. They can be a little bit expensive for a name brand. I would probably recommend getting a no-name brand such as these for the price savings. It'll likely work. But if you don't want to go the Argon 1 route, any USB SSD enclosure that has decent reviews on Amazon will likely be fine. Just be sure to pay attention to the text and make sure that you get the right SSD for its interface. I do recommend this Samsung 980. Uh, it's a great price for one terabyte of storage and I've used them on several devices and it's been great. The last thing I wanna call out before we get started with the installation of the Home Assistant operating system is the prices of Raspberry Pis. They're through the roof right now. While they are dropping, it's really hard to find one. I strongly suggest that you take a look at the rpilocator.com and associated Twitter account. This guy is a godsend. I've gotten two Raspberry Pis through him. He can find them cheap at MSRP and you can sign up for alerts to try and get them. I do not recommend paying $100 for your Raspberry Pi 4. Hello, here I'm gonna show you how to assemble a Raspberry Pi 4B with an SSD for Home Assistant. I originally already had this together, but I figured I should back it up and show you the process. I have a Raspberry Pi 4B. Um, these are heat sink pads here. Uh, it's in the kit. We'll skip over that for now. We have a Western Digital Blue SSD M.2 to fit with the rest of this case. Notice it's not an NVMe. It's a SATA SSD. M2 is the size, but the uh, interface is SATA. That is important because we are using an Argon 1 M2, and this is only for SATA right there. Um, so this board will interface with the Raspberry Pi so that it can always have this SSD, and that'll prevent us from cooking any SD cards as we use Home Assistant. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our SSD and we're gonna place it into the key slot here. 
carefully get it lined up. It'll have a little bit of a friction, but it should click. And once it's clicked, it'll have this upward tilt. You're gonna take the small screw that came with the kit, go ahead and put it on the screwdriver. And we are gonna just push that down to this little screw hole and tighten down the SSD. So we have our Western Digital SATA SSD attached to the Argon One board. Next up, we're gonna take our Raspberry Pi and you will apply your thermal paste pads that it comes with to attach to here on the Argon. But we're gonna grab the expansion board, this piece, and we're gonna line it up with the aux port and the micro HDMI. We're just gonna carefully slide these in firmly that it's in there, but not so rough that it breaks. So once we've got that, we're gonna lay it down into the upper board or this upper part of the case. There, there is a board in here with some dip switches on using the IR and the uh, light and fan. But when we attach this, we need to make sure that these GPIO pins are lining up with the corresponding slots here. So that's really what I'm focusing on as I line this up, is that my pins are all lined up. Looks like they are. I'm gonna give it a firm, but still gentle compression to make sure those pins are all in there pretty good. As we're putting in our screws to lock down this Raspberry Pi, we have our four corners here that will have uh, mounting points on this Argon One lower facility. So we're trying to get this bottom one here, this one on the uh, HDMI board, and then I think there's one more somewhere, probably the middle one um, for these other screws. I gotta kinda see how many I have, <laughs> where they fit. I didn't pay too much attention taking it apart. On your computer, go to raspberrypi.com slash software to download the Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and open it and click install. And go ahead and connect your micro SD card via your micro SD to USB adapter to the computer. Inside the Raspberry Pi Imager, click Choose OS, then scroll down to Miscellaneous Utility Images, Bootloader, and then USB Boot. Choose your SD card that's connected to the computer and click right. This USB boot operating system will allow your Raspberry Pi to boot directly from your SSD once it's connected to the USB. Once it's done writing to the micro SD card, go ahead and remove it from your computer and take it over to your Raspberry Pi. So now we have the USB bootloader on the SD card, the micro SD card. We're gonna put that into the Raspberry Pi down here and I'm just going to place it on top of the bottom of the case, and I will not be connecting the dongle at this time. I'm going to attach a HDMI cable and apply power to the Raspberry Pi. This will turn it on. Looking at these lights, we have a flashing green light, which means it worked, it was successful. You can see the glare, but on the monitor, We've also got green showing it was successful. So now I will remove power and HDMI, open it back up and remove the SD card to take back to the computer to load Raspberry Pi OS onto it. Back on the computer, we're gonna click choose OS and select Raspberry Pi OS. We're also gonna select our micro SD card that's connected to the computer, but before you click right, click on the gear icon in the bottom right hand corner and change the username and password. I'm going to choose Pi and Raspberry, the defaults, and then I'm also gonna configure my Wi-Fi so that when it turns on, it can connect to the internet. I'm gonna click save, and now I'm gonna click write. While we wait for this to write Raspberry Pi onto the micro SD card, 
I just want to remind you, this is only for the Argon One, um, or if you are working with an SSD that cannot connect to your main PC, if you're using an external SSD USB enclosure at this time, you could just choose Home Assistant as your operating system and your storage as your SSD and click right, but I'll cover that in a moment again. So I now have the micro SD card with the Raspberry Pi operating system on it. And we're gonna take that and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. And then I'm just gonna place it on top of the bottom half here, because we'll be using that here shortly. And then I'm going to plug in the power and the HDMI. Here's the screen recording from the Raspberry Pi as it turns on sped up significantly as it tries to boot from the USB, which is not connected at this time. Um, it's booting now into the Raspberry Pi operating system off of the SD card. And once we're into the Raspberry Pi operating system, I will connect the dongle for the SSD to be connected to the Raspberry Pi. And you can see those storage locations pop up. But next, we're going to go to the Raspberry Start menu, Accessories, and then Imager. Inside the Raspberry Pi imager, we're going to click Choose OS and scroll down to Other Specific Purpose Operating System and then Home Assistant. Home Assistant again, and then choose the Home Assistant for your Raspberry Pi. For me, it's the Raspberry Pi 4. And then for storage, I'll choose the SSD on my Raspberry Pi, which will be the Argon 1. However, if you're using Option 2 where your SSD is connected directly to your computer for the Raspberry Pi imager, you could just go ahead and select that here and you could have skipped the first installation. Right now, I'm typing in the password that I set when installing Raspberry Pi onto the SD card. I didn't delete this footage because I wanted you to see that it could hang up and look a little slow. The speed of writing to the SD card is dependent on how fast your SD card is and how fast the USB adapter for your micro SD card is as well. Once that's done though, we'll go ahead and turn off the Raspberry Pi and continue on with our installation. So now I will remove the power and the HDMI cord. We're gonna remove our dongle for the SSD. I've got a wireless mouse and keyboard attached. I'll leave that for now. We're gonna open up and we're gonna take out our micro SD card then we will reattach the bottom of the Argon One and screw it back together. So now that we have it back together, we will make sure that we have our SSD attached via the USB dongle when it turns on. I'm gonna connect my HDMI and my power. And now we're booting into Home Assistant. This segment is a sped up screen recording of the Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant turning on and doing all the checks that it runs as it turns on. Um, it does take a few minutes to get started. I really debated on cutting this out, but I wanted you to see just how long it could take just so you didn't think that there was anything wrong as you go through this for the first time. If you have followed along this far, please don't quit just yet as we need to still get connected to the internet um, the easiest way would be to connect over Ethernet and just plug it in and be done. But if you are going to do Wi-Fi, follow along for these next steps. And I'll have this typed out in the description. The first command we're going to run is network info and check and see that we have a wireless LAN interface or WLAN 0. Now that we know that that's there, we can update WLAN 0 with this string of arguments to tell it what Wi-Fi we're connecting to, what type of password it is, and uh, all the settings necessary to make it work. And at the end of the string here, you'll see the Wi-Fi SSID, which is the name of your Wi-Fi, and then Wi-Fi PSK, which is the password to your Wi-Fi. Once you enter that, you'll get the confirmation message from Home Assistant that the command was completed successfully. And if we run network info one more time, you'll see that you're connected and have an IP address. Using that IP address, enter it into the browser on your computer, and you'll get to the setup screen for your Home Assistant instance. And now you have Home Assistant installed on an SSD on a Raspberry Pi. 
Hopefully everything went smoothly for you, but if you have any questions or need any help, please leave a comment below or reach out on social media, and I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Now that you have it finished and you're ready to get to the next step, go ahead and subscribe and follow along for the next part in this series to figure out how to make your smart home smarter and easier for you to use. Um, as of right now, you are good to go. You can mess around with it. You can start connecting your devices. But if you want to get a more guided introduction to Home Assistant, go ahead and subscribe and I hope to walk you through that. If you have any questions about your installation or having any issues with your installation on a Raspberry Pi or just in general, feel free to leave a comment or message me and I'll try to help out any way I can.